Welcome to Educate for Life Online. This is the first lesson in our first class series created on purpose or evolved by chance. This lesson is called the fossil record versus evolution, and we're going to look at whether the fossil evidence points towards evolution as Darwinists claim, or if it offers support for creation. We'll examine the alleged human ancestors that have come and gone over the years, as well as several of the most commonly cited examples of missing links. No one can observe the distant past, but looking at fossils is very helpful in determining what has happened in the past. Back in December 2018, I did my first video on this online course offered for Young Earth Creationists by creationist Kevin Conover. He's from San Diego, California, and has a ministry called Educate for Life. That video was mainly on his evidence against or for human evolution. This one's from the same first online class, but it talks more about transitional fossils. Let's see which side of the creation-evolution debate has the best claim to the fossil evidence. Are there limits to change? Well, the Bible says that animals rep reproduce after their kind. Now, that word kind used in the Bible it's not a word that science currently uses, but it's probably most uh, similar to the word family when we look in science and how science classifies different, different types of organisms and animals. So after their family would be appropriate. Well, that's interesting. Does that mean that humans are the same kind as apes since we're in the same family? The truth is that kind means anything a creationist wants it to be, depending on what they're talking about. It can be anything from genus down to species as in humans. And what the Bible teaches is that animals reproduce after their kind. They don't change from one kind into another kind. Now, there's variation within kinds. We have all different types of horse kinds. We have all different types of cat kinds. But they don't change from one family or kind into another. Did he just say there's all different types of cat kinds and horse kinds? Doesn't that contradict what they teach that it says in the Bible? Science says there are limits to change, and the Bible says there are limits to change. <clears throat> Creatures have always reproduced after their kind. Well, you certainly won't get an argument from me there. Every species gives birth to the same species, but populations change over time. Now, last I knew, they had at least 23 different kinds of birds, kinds of birds, described by Answers in Genesis. There's something called a Lazarus taxon. This is a species that disappears from the fossil record for long ages, but then suddenly reappears as though risen from the dead, like Lazarus in the Bible, right? The Wallamy pine was extinct for 150 million years, supposedly. Okay, this fossil they have here, they, they were dating these fossils to 150 million years. Now, we do talk about uh, the dating of fossils in another lesson, in a future lesson. So we'll get there, and we'll talk about how they arrive at dates with things like carbon dating and so forth. But for now, we'll just go with what their, their claim is here. It was extinct for 150 million years. But they found it alive in three locations today. And so, the, the question is, is over 150 million years, if evolution is true, wouldn't we expect to see change in the wallaby pine? It's exactly the same. No change. So like he just said, a Lazarus taxon is something that disappears from the fossil record only to reappear later on. This type of thing is most common after major extinction events like the end of the Permian. A plant or animal may go extinct locally or throughout most of its range only to survive in small pockets. Then eventually it would re-inhabit the areas where it formerly lived. Evolution doesn't require that it would undergo a major change. Another example of this is um, a shrimp fossil here. This was recorded in Science Magazine November 10, 2010. They have a, a shrimp fossil here, 360 million years old, and we have a shrimp today. They look exactly the same. Why are we seeing no evolution? Maybe it's because evolution is a bad hypothesis. It's a bad theory, and we don't have evidence to support it. Or maybe it's because marine shrimp have extremely large populations and undergo very little 
environmental change over long periods of time. This would be a classic example where we'd expect to see almost no change at all. Another one is what's called the coelacanth. <clears throat> okay, a coelacanth is a lobe fin fish once thought to be extinct. And they have fossils of these, again, that they dated at millions of years old. And in science textbooks, they actually drew the coelacanth with legs on it. Now, we've never found a coelacanth with legs on it, not even in the fossil record, but they said, we believe this is what happened. The coelacanth evolved into this creature, and they drew a picture in it, and they tell kids this is what's happening. But in fact, today, <clears throat> we have coelacanths that are alive, supposedly millions of years old, and here it is alive. No legs, doesn't walk on the ocean floor, no change. I've read several books on the coelacanth and seen textbooks where they're featured. Never once have I ever seen them drawn with legs. There are about 80 extinct species of coelacanths in the fossil record, and neither of the two species alive today are the same as any of the fossil species that we see that are extinct. If anyone wants a much more in-depth explanation of why the coelacanth is not a living fossil, they completed the genome back in 2013, and the scientists who did that have a Google Hangout published on their channel called Coelacanth Chat, where they go into detail of how it evolved slowly over millions and millions of years. They start talking about how people call it a living fossil and why that's wrong at about 10 minutes in. Again, more evidence that the biblical theory is true, that animals were created as they are, they reproduce after their kind. There is adaptation and variation within kinds, but you don't change from one kind to another. Actually, everything that Kevin Conover has said here is either misleading, wrong, or can be easily refuted. The one thing we can be sure of is that he's full of hot air. God bless you. I hope you enjoy our ne next lesson as we discuss Noah's flood and the evidence for a worldwide flood. If you liked the first two videos on his online course of Creation versus Evolution, then stay tuned because I have a feeling they're going to get even better.